let's now talk about solubility of gases in in liquid so um, for now let's just consider our liquid solvent to be water here and and if we have to say which gases which particular gases are readily soluble in water and which aren't which are sparingly soluble in water we just go back to our uh, simple concept of of like dissolves like so um, again gases like oxygen for example they're clearly non they're comprised of non-polar molecules very sparingly soluble in water sparingly soluble in water so in fact the the solubility is so low something like 0 0.00125 moles per liter per atmosphere so that's how small the the solubility at room temperature is so in one liter of water you can basically dissolve only 0.00125 moles of oxygen gas um, at room temperature so at and at one atmospheric pressure but whereas if you take gases like um, ammonia for example nh3 NH3 is clearly a, a polar molecule and so, you know nitrogen has one lone pair of electrons and then you know it forms bonds with three uh, three hydrogen atoms so so the nitrogen here is clearly the negative center of the dipole or a negatively charged side of the dipole so this molecule um, is going to have is bound to have uh, strong interactions with water molecules which are also polar so the solubility here is you know four orders of magnitude higher than um, in case of oxygen and so so this is readily soluble in water so you get the idea here gases that are uh, that are comprised of molecules that are not polar like oxygen nitrogen even methane in in case of methane there is not much you know difference in electronegativity between uh, carbon and hydrogen in fact they are very similar so so there is no reason why this this has to be polar it's it's in fact a non polar molecule so that's why this gas is also its solubility is very less in water so that's that you know like dissolves like and and we got that so uh, i also mentioned in an earlier video that uh, that solubility of gases is in fact significantly impacted by conditions like pressure and temperature so let, let's look at pressure first and see you know what role um, it has to play in in all of this so let's take a simple situation here you have the liquid phase in blue all these uh, liquid molecules in blue here and then on top of the liquid phase you have um this gaseous phase with um, all these particles gaseous particles that are uh, at a let's say a, a pressure of p and and temperature t and you have this lid that is uh, leak proof no gas can escape through this so so at, at in this particular situation you know the the gas molecules are basically moving around in all directions they um are co constantly colliding with one another separating flying apart and doing all kinds of things and once in a while some of these molecules have enough energy to you know go strike this liquid gas interface and go straight into the solution so some of these actually go straight into the solution phase so let me draw some of these gaseous particles in this um the system is assumed to be in 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 a dynamic equilibrium and what we mean by that is the number of pa gaseous particles entering and uh, exiting the solution phase are equal at that point so so once the system is in equilibrium now let's say you uh, you actually apply some force here and or, or put a weight on top and and push this lid down till maintaining the seal but the lid is now down so the pressure here in the system has all of a sudden gone up and and we all we already know that this increase in pressure cannot affect the liquid phase because the liquids uh, as we know are incompressible and and that's the reason why you're able to clear a clog in your toilet for example because as you use a plunger and um, you know push the liquid down it's not going to uh, yield to the pressure all it does is transfer the pressure to whatever is underneath the liquid phase so so that's how you're able to clear the 
uh, clear a clog. So anyway, so so what I mean to say here is the increase in the pressure is basically lead uh, causing the gas volume to go down because gases respond to um, respond to pressure as we know. So so because of reduce in volume here, the number of particles, gaseous particles per particles per unit volume goes up. Their population density is going up. So as a result, they're bumping into each other more often. They're colliding more often, and also the rate at which these particles actually go into the solution phase are also is also going up so so as a result what happens is you have uh, more of these gas molecules you have a new dynamic equilibrium you have more of these gas molecules entering and exiting the the solution at any point of time so let's say this is at a new pressure now p dash and uh, and at, so at this new pressure increased new pressure the the solubility of the of this particular gas in this liquid phase has gone up so what happens when you have let's say a mixture of gases in this system here and it's not just one gas but a mixture of gases and we we are quite familiar with that because air around us is a mixture of um, you know oxygen nitrogen carbon dioxide uh, hydrogen and, and so on and so forth so so if you were to pick let's say one particular gas in that mixture and talk about its solubility so the term that then comes up is is partial pressure so in fact the the guy who first did a lot of quantitative analysis and came up with sort of a solid relationship between solubility of a gas and and the pressure was this english chemist called william henry william henry and based on all his studies he came up with a law and the law is um, called henry's law henry's law and what he said basically was the solubility of a gas in a liquid of a gas in a liquid is directly proportional to so that is the quantitative relationship we are talking about is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas partial pressure of that particular gas above the uh, liquid surface or the solution surface so you know we already saw how many different ways uh, solubility of of a solute in a, in a solvent uh, can be expressed as so the most common way here of expressing solubility of a gas in a liquid is mole fraction so the, this law can also be restated as the partial pressure of a gas in in its vapor phase let's say we call it p is is directly proportional to the mole fraction of that gas as a solute in the liquid phase so so this is the partial pressure of the gas in the vapor phase and this is the mole fraction of the gas as a solute in the in the liquid phase um, and replacing the pro the proportionality sign with a constant um, p is equal to kh which is called the henry's constant times x so if you were to act, draw um, a graph uh, between partial pressure of the gas and its solubility in in the liquid phase so let's say mole fraction this is the partial pressure of the gas you will see you, you get a straight line so you get a straight line the relationship is linear and the slope obviously the slope of this this line here is is kh at a given temperature there there is a particular slope so if you're talking about different gases each one of them is going to have a different slope so so in this case let's say this is gas a gas a and if you have another gas it might have a slope or uh, you know smaller or or larger depending on you know what gas you are looking at and what does it tell you so let's say this is gas b and what does it tell you about its solubility in that particular liquid so so as the slope goes up as this this line becomes steeper and steeper at any constant pressure higher the kh higher the kh value lower is its solubility so as you can see gas a here in this case has higher kh value higher slope of this line and it ends up having lower solubility so again and as i said earlier kh is going to be different at different temperatures and uh, we'll talk about um, effect of temperature on gaseous solubility a little later 
so henry's law actually is um, is it comes really handy in a variety of um, applications in our day to day lives one one such example that you can talk about is that of scuba divers so the, these divers when they go deep into the ocean so so at those depths the the pressure that they are encountering is really high added to the atmospheric pressure you have this extra pressure due to the water column above them it, and we know that it's uh, equal to rho gh so at at those really high pressures what happens is the air that they are breathing through the cylinders that they carry the the uh, the the solubility of of gases at that point in their blood goes up because of the, the increased pressure so what happens when when the diver is actually coming back to the surface is the pressure is dropping and these dissolved gases that were fine being in the liquid phase at at the bottom of the ocean all of a sudden want to come out of the um, liquid phase so they form these bubbles in inside your blood and so these bubbles could actually block the capillaries and uh, and really cause a medical emergency it could it could even lead to death and uh, it, so this medical condition is often known as as bends so so to alleviate this condition of bends what they do is they dilute this this mixture of gases in the cylinder with helium so helium helium has as a very low um, solubility in in uh, in blood and also its kh value is is pretty high so so even when you increase the pressure quite a bit the the increase in solubility of helium is not as much as let's say nitrogen and oxygen for example so 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 by doing that you're sort of trying to reduce the the difference in the amount of dissolved gases in the in the guy's blood when uh, he or she is at the bottom versus uh, when they are at the surface so another example um, you know simple one that you can talk about is that of aerated drinks so you have your beverage bottles like you know um, your coca cola or or uh, pepsi so you want to maximize the amount of carbon dioxide dissolved in the liquid right to increase the frizz um so so while sealing these bottles with the carbon dioxide gas on top of the um the liquid they are sealed under really high pressure basically to increase the solubility of carbon dioxide in the liquid and they are kept that way until you open the bottle or you open the cap and then you can hear that um, hissing sound or or noise wave that which is indicative of release of that high pressure here and and slowly as the pressure comes back to the atmospheric pressure you can you know see these uh, uh, see these bubbles of carbon dioxide escaping from the liquid phase into the gaseous phase because they are no longer uh, soluble in the liquid phase at that pressure